Very good morning and welcome to Breakfast News. In the next one hour, we'll get you all the latest news and updates in India and also across the globe. We'll have different segments also from national to international, business, sports and web review also. Correspondents from across the country will also be joining us for the latest updates. So it's a power-packed one hour. I'm Abhishek Mahajan. First up, the headlines. Centre reviews preparedness in five states of eastern India, Assam, West Bengal, Odisha, Bihar and Jharkhand to address needs and challenges of current phase of COVID pandemic. Five critical areas of action highlighted. COVID-19 supplies from the global community allocated to states and UTs by Government of India 1,764 oxygen concentrators, 1,760 oxygen cylinders, 7 oxygen generation plants, 450 ventilators, more than 1.35 lakh remdesivir vials delivered so far. India's cumulative vaccine coverage exceeds 16.24 crore doses. More than 18.9 lakh vaccine doses administered in the last 24 hours, including over 2.30 lakh beneficiaries of age group 18 to 44 vaccinated in the last 24 hours. Three terrorists killed while one surrendered in an encounter between terrorists and security forces in the Kanigam area of the Shopia district of South Kashmir, operation still underway. In Tamil Nadu, Governor Banwari Lal Purohit invites MK Stalin to form the government in the state. DMK president to be sworn in tomorrow. The ceremony would be held in a simple manner at Raj Bhavan premises. Election Commission of India decides to defer by-elections of parliamentary and assembly constituencies in various states and UTs in view of pandemic, says it would not be appropriate to hold by-elections till the pandemic situation significantly improves and conditions become conducive to hold elections. In an important development, US President Joe Biden to back WTO IP waiver for COVID-19 vaccines says this is a global health crisis and the extraordinary circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic call for extraordinary measures. G7 schools China and Russia over threats, bullying and rights abuses says Russia is trying to undermine democracies and threatening Ukraine while China is guilty of human rights abuses and of using its economic clout to bully others. In sports, Istanbul to stage an all-English final of UEFA Champions League. Chelsea marches to final, thrashing Real Madrid 2-0 in second leg with an aggregate score of 3-1. The Blues to meet Manchester City in the final on May 29th. All right then, let's start with our national news. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan along with Member Health Niti Aayog Dr. Vinod K. Paul chaired a high-level meeting yesterday with the eastern states of Assam, West Bengal, Orisha, Bihar and Jharkhand. The review meeting assessed the arrangements put in place by these eastern states for containment and management of the COVID-19 pandemic. Five critical areas of action were discussed for addressing the needs and challenges of recent phase of the COVID-19 pandemic in these states, which has led to an unprecedented surge in number of daily cases and increased mortality. Dr. V.K. Paul stressed for states to ramp up the hospital and clinical management capacities, including effective operation of ambulances, enhanced testing in districts, witnessing higher positivity than the national average and also to take timely decisions to augment HR under the new enabling provisions of the union government. He also highlighted private sector participation in telemedicine services 
to relieve pressure on public facilities and requested for diligent following of Home Ministry's order on containment measures. As the meeting, at the meeting, I should say, DG ICMR reminded the states of the Home Ministry's advisory of implementing lockdown measures in districts with less than 10 percent positivity and asked them to ramp up on facilities like sites for RDPCR testing, vaccination, and the augmentation of the medical workforce. So, COVID-19 supplies received from the global community have been effectively allocated to states and UTs by the Government of India. The government has been receiving international donations of COVID-19 relief, medical supplies and equipment since 27 April this year from different countries, including United Kingdom, Ireland, Romania, Russia, UAE, USA, Taiwan, Kuwait, France, Thailand, Germany, Uzbekistan, Belgium, Italy, etc. So, 1,764 oxygen concentrators, 1,760 oxygen cylinders, 7 oxygen generation plants, 450 ventilators and over 1.35 lakh remdesivir vials have been delivered so far. And all these relief medical supplies and equipment are being allocated by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in a timely manner to the 38 tertiary care institutions and 31 states and so far in the first tranche. And this is an ongoing exercise. The cargo clearance and deliveries are facilitated without delay in coordination with agencies concerned and the deliveries and further installations if required are also being monitored by the health ministry on a regular basis. So, India continues to immune its population against COVID-19 in phase 3 of the vaccination program and the cumulative number of COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country stands at 16 crore. 24,30,828 till 8 p.m. of May 5th. And as on day 110 of the vaccination drive, total 18,90,346 vaccine doses were given out of this 2,30,305 beneficiaries were from the age group of 18 to 44 years received their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccination. Meanwhile, the Union Ministry of Finance has clarified that no consignment of 3,000 oxygen concentrators was pending clearance from the custom authorities. The matter regarding the same came up in the Delhi High Court and the same was clarified by the Government Council. However, the social media has been flooded with the news that 3,000 oxygen concentrators are lying with customs and the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs have again checked with its field formations and there is no such consignment lying with the customs. However, since a photograph has also been put on the Twitter, CBIC has said that if anybody has information as to where it is lying, the same may be informed to them and they will take the immediate action. So, transport aircraft of the Indian Air Force are currently carrying out commitments in four different locations outside India towards COVID-19 relief ops, while an IL-76 is airlifting 350 oxygen cylinders from Singapore to Hindon Air Base. Another IL-76 is bringing three cryogenic oxygen containers from Bangkok to Panagar Air Base. In addition, one IAF C-17 is deployed for airlifting four empty cryogenic oxygen containers from Bangkok to Panagar and another C-17 is getting four more empty cryogenic oxygen containers from Austin, Belgium to Panagar Air Base. In India, C-17s airlifted two empty cryogenic oxygen containers from Vijayawada to Bhubaneswar, one from Yalahanka to Bhubaneswar, four from Hindon to Bhubaneswar and four from Nagpur to Bhubaneswar. And the airlift of 12 cryogenic oxygen containers from Hyderabad to Bhubaneswar, seven from Bhopal to Jamnagar and Ranchi, 11 from Hindon. Agra and Lucknow to Ranchi and Jamnagar, two from Hindon to Ranchi and four from Chandigarh to Ranchi is in progress. The global community continue to extend a helping hand in supporting efforts of Government of India in the collective fight against the global COVID-19 pandemic. 
and as US four military aircraft carrying medical supplies have landed in India amid the COVID-19 so far, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has described it as a heroic effort from all those involved. The consignments to India contain 1 million rapid diagnostic tests, 545 oxygen concentrators, 16 lakh 300 N95 masks, 457 oxygen cylinders, 440 regulators, 220 pulse oximeters and one deployable oxygen concentration system. The United States and India have closely worked together to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and the US would be sending supplies worth more than $100 million to India in its fight against second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. And talking about Delhi situation of COVID-19, Delhi reported 311 COVID-19 related fatalities in the last 24 hours and with that taking the cumulative number of deaths to 18,063. And according to a health bulletin yesterday, 20,960 new cases were reported taking the total cases to 12,53,902. So a total of 79,491 tests were conducted in a day, the positivity rate fell to 26.37% from 29.56% on Tuesday. So, positivity rate has indeed gone down from 29% to 26%. And talking about the Maharashtra situation now, 57,640 new cases were registered yesterday, that means in the last 24 hours, and 57,006 patients were discharged, while 920 patients died in the past 24 hours. And currently, there are 6,41,569 active cases in the state. Also, 38,52,501 people are in home quarantine and 32,000. 174 people are in institutional quarantine. Right, my colleague Shama Mishra is uh, joining me from Mumbai to give us update on the COVID-19 situation in Maharashtra. Uh, very good morning, Shama. First of all, around 57,000 cases were registered in the last 24 hours in Maharashtra, but the worrying figure is 920 deaths in the last 24 hours. Cases are declining uh, recovery rate is also increasing but again the death toll is a matter of worry uh, definitely and the state government is trying to uh, you know control this figure as well by ramping up all the medical facilities that could be uh, you know provided to all the districts and to mm. all the places where the medical facilities have uh, uh, seen have witnessed a reduction uh, apart from that we are also seeing uh, you know uh, the, the numbers, the daily numbers that are being registered of positive COVID cases in the state, that has come to a level where we could say it is plateauing. And uh, almost a week or more than a week, it has been coming at the average of 60,000. So when it come down, comes down uh, below 60,000, it is a real matter of relief. But yeah. still, uh, you know, through our medium, we would like to urge people that this is not the time that they become, that they again yeah. become complacent about the fact that the whole pandemic situation is easing out. They should yeah. still follow all the COVID appropriate behavior and they should still be on an alert mode because the third wave is definitely going to hit us. And this is the same thing which, which our Chief Minister, uh, Maharashtra's Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre has yesterday told people. Uh, he was addressing the state of Maharashtra uh, through online means and yesterday he mentioned about how our various districts in the state have been registering low numbers but then there are still districts which are registering higher numbers uh, in positive COVID-19 cases. But uh, again, third wave is going to hit us. And many people have told that it could be in July, August or September. And we could only delay the entire third wave. But we could not uh, avoid, this, uh, avoid the fact that th the third wave is going to hit us. So we have to be prepared for it. Right. And that is what has been told to the district uh, uh, administration the district collectors that they have to ramp up the entire medical facilities yeah. wherever they see loopholes they have to fix it because uh, when the third wave hits us 
uh, it should not be seen as that we were not ready we were not prepared that preparation has not been done everything should be in place so that we would be better uh, you know in a better position to face the third wave if not avoid it completely but again uh, we are seeing on the vaccination front the vaccination drive has become slower because of the fact that there are not enough vials available with the state government so we are seeing that on a daily basis only around uh, or below 1 lakh uh, vaccination oh. doses have been administered to people and till now uh, we are seeing 1 crore 63 Uh, lack people uh, uh, when it, the vaccination doses have been administered to people this contains both the first and the second doses but okay. largely it's the first dose and people above 45 years of age are waiting for the second dose because mm -hmm. uh, here in mumbai or elsewhere also uh, it is the fact that uh, if the 18 to 44 age group is being vaccinated then yeah. all the other age groups are stopped and if 45 years of above age group is beginning uh, to get vaccinated then the 18 to 44 uh, uh, age group is stopped so we have to wait for more number of uh, vaccination doses to be supplied to the state of maharashtra so that the vaccination drive could pick up pace and so can we uh, be better prepared for the third wave when it hits us abhishek absolutely sharma and people need to go out in numbers to get inoculated uh, and also uh, uh, talking about the test uh, sharma covid test drop in city as uh, door to door uh, checkups that we are learning has stopped and the volume of daily covid-19 tests in mumbai also has dropped by 40% uh, well yes sir we are seeing uh, that uh, you know more number of measures were taken out hmm. uh, by various uh, uh, the district administration so the municipal corporation is doing their own bit and we have seen uh, that mumbai municipal corporation has been lauded at various places and has been presented as a model also so we have always seen that uh, uh, be dharavi or be other places mm. they have taken out models which have resulted in good positive uh, we could say outcome so here also in mumbai we are seeing that the cases are dropping and because of the fact that more number of treatment uh, more number of tests are being ha uh, happening every day and uh, the bmc commissioner himself has said uh, that more number of uh, the, the entire number of tests that is happening currently that should be increasing even more so that uh, we cannot say that tests were less and that is why the numbers are coming less but yes uh, these numbers are uh, the test numbers are being increased and daily we are expecting uh, this test to go about 40000 uh, daily so that even if uh, uh, one person is positive we could con we could trace the contacts that have been uh, you know uh, uh, within those uh, 30 uh, contacts mm. of that person and we could be easily tracing the uh, entire fact that uh, this person has come into contact with this and there could be a slight chance of infection and that could be arrested as soon as possible so these are the measures uh, right. which are actually helping the uh, city to uh, you know to deal with the numbers that are coming that are being registered every day apart from mumbai we are also seeing thane navi mumbai raigarh uh, amravati uh, nagpur nashik these are the areas that are registering low number of cases mm. however like we've already mentioned uh, that there are districts uh, which have been uh, uh, showing no signs of coming down no signs no signs of downfall uh, these are uh, sangli kolapur uh, uh, the uh, uh, satara bulhana mm. these are the areas which have not started showing down trend yet so we are waiting for the fact that the restrictions the measures that are being put in place uh, by uh, the different bodies different administrations they should start showing results and maharashtra uh, for a real fact uh, yeah. that should come uh, you know that, that should follow uh, the downfall pattern in the terms of positive covid cases sure. absolutely right uh, like you mentioned shama the fight is weak and we cannot afford to lower our guard we cannot afford to be complacent and the death toll like you mentioned is a matter of very 920 deaths in maharashtra in the last 24 hours and the figures comes on a day when the supreme court praised in fact maharashtra's handling of the second wave of infections and recommending the center to take the note from the mumbai model uh, thank you shama thank you for bringing us up to speed on covid situation meanwhile according to the indian council of medical research 29 crore 67 lakh 75000 and 209 samples have been tested for covid-19 so far across the country and out of this 19 lakh 23131 samples were tested yesterday kuch din pehle mujhko mujhe 
कोरोना हुआ था तब चौदह दिन मैं घर में ही थी हर रोज मैं बाप लेती थी गर्म पानी गर्म पानी पीती थी हर रोज मैं योगासन व्यायाम करती थी और हर दिन मैं सातवीं कार लेती थी सैनिटाइजर मास्क इसका प्रयोग ज़्यादा करती थी और कोरोना की कोई भी डर मैंने मन में नहीं रखा तब मैं जल्दी ठीक हो गई मैं एक कॉलेज से आई थी तब मुझे कोरोना के लक्षण दिखे तो मैं डॉक्टर के पास गई डॉक्टर ने मेरी टेस्ट की तो मेरा टेस्ट पॉजिटिव आया तो उन्होंने बोला कि आप घर पे ही आइसोलेट हो जाओ हम हो गए फिर फिर हमारी हमारे मम्मी पापा ने बहुत केयर की हमें सुबह जल्दी उठाया और एग्स दिए काढ़ा दिया खाने को दिया सब दिया डॉक्टर ने जैसा बोला था हमने वैसा सब कुछ बोला आ, सब कुछ खाया इसलिए हम आ, अब बहुत अच्छे से ठीक हो गए हैं कोविड के लक्षण दिखे जिसके वजह से हम डॉक्टर के पास गए डॉक्टर के पास जाने के बाद डॉक्टरों ने गोलियां दी और घर पे आए होम आइसोलेशन में रहने के लिए बोला और होम आइसोलेशन में रहने के टाइम पे आ, सब हेल्दी खाने के बोले जैसे एग्स वगैरह और जिससे प्रोटीन्स मिले और ऑक्सीजन हमेशा चेक करने के लिए बोला था और जो डॉक्टर ने गोलियां दी थी और आयुर्वेदिक की वजह से आज मुझे अच्छा लग रहा है Right, so positive messages coming out of the people of Maharashtra who have recovered from COVID. And uh, going back to the Delhi situation again, like we mentioned, 311 COVID-19 fatalities were reported in the last 24 hours, and the cumulative number of deaths to 18,063. And my colleague Tapas Bhattacharya joins me to bring us up to speed on COVID situation in Delhi. Good morning, Tapas. First of all, uh, update us on the oxygen supply uh, in Delhi. And Delhi witnessed around 21,000 cases. Yesterday, that means in the last 24 hours, with the positivity rate going going down from 29 percent to 26.37 percent, and also update us on the how many tests were conducted in Delhi yesterday. That's right. Uh, you know, you're bang on there. That uh, the number of uh, facilities is a cause of concern in the national capital. Though uh, the big part that that, that you want to think about is the fact that uh, uh, the number of uh, new cases has uh, come down. That Uh, it was uh, right yesterday. It was twenty thousand nine hundred and sixty with a positivity rate of twenty six point three seven percent, which means they on the trot that the positive percent days uh, there is a reduction of nine percent if we if we calculate it. And uh, you know this is a, a good news for for people. We've been uh, talking about the fact that uh, there is uh, there there is a rise in in terms of uh, this particular second wave uh, has been tremendous. It has been gasping for uh, for breath, uh, gasping for oxygen, as you have pointed out. And uh, we've been told that yesterday, in fact, the uh, the number of uh, tested uh, testing uh, it was over seventy nine thousand. In fact, okay. if I may say, it is a pro it is a uh, 79,491 uh, to be precise, which is uh, okay. somewhere in the region of almost 80,000, still less mm. than what it should be. Uh, yeah. Remember, uh, before this pandemic, uh, this particular wave hit the national capital, Delhi was uh, somewhere in the region of 95, 92, one lakh uh, testing. If Delhi was conducting, so in that sense, you know, uh, uh, Delhi will be. Uh, uh, You know, the Delhi ads will be hoping that uh, the testing relax. Um, whenever we spoke, uh, so, you know, we spoke about people. Uh, when we spoke to people or we spoke to the lab people, uh, they're saying that uh, the testing uh, uh, delay has increased. Earlier, we used to, one used to get a test, uh, you know, test result in within 24 hours. Now that delay has uh, spiraled to almost three to five days. So, <clears throat> in that sense, uh, uh, those are very important things that uh, uh, you know the the administration needs to uh, talk about and uh, needs to ramp up. In fact, Delhi has to ramp up its uh, uh, you know testing at the same time uh, delivery of the results in a period uh, that uh, needs to work on. Uh, it is imperative uh, imperative to know that uh, the Uh, lab people are actually stretched uh, beyond the uh, limit. Uh, we've been told that uh, many of the lab technicians have uh, themselves, uh, in, you know, got COVID. So in that sense, uh, 
their hamper their work has been hampered uh, in that way but uh, it, it is expected that uh, the situation right. is going to improve uh, in the national capital and uh, also the oxygen situation has also improved uh, considering the fact that the oxygen express that the uh, union uh, indian railways has been running okay. has uh, so far delivered uh, over 450 metric uh, metric tons of uh, liquid uh, uh, liquid medical oxygen and that actually has uh, given a lot of breathing uh, you know Uh, space to the uh, administration in the national mm. capital because remember earlier a lot of people were uh, complaining there was sos calls going uh, messages mm. flooding the uh, the social media where hospitals uh, be it big hospitals uh, smaller hospitals mm. government hospitals private hospitals were all uh, complaining about the lack of oxygen so in that sense the situation has improved, has improved. Uh, okay. uh, you know uh, but uh, tapas uh, what about the vaccines the capital and it is expected to improve further hmm absolutely it has improved but again, okay. again i was asking you what about the vaccines in delhi uh, what about the people of the age group of 18 to 44 years of uh, age are they getting the vaccines easily or they are struggling <laughs> it is a struggle it is a struggle i have to say that uh, 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 so the 18 to 45 people are very much eager to get the inoculation done and tested and uh, that's one of the reason why uh, whenever even i was in fact trying uh, uh, with my brother to get uh, our cup uh, uh, you know a slot and it is whenever whenever uh, a slot is coming out it is getting filled up uh, quite uh, quite fast and uh, that's the whole point uh, especially in, you know there are uh, for, for uh, there are parts in the national capital where uh the vaccination drive has uh, started in in this or earners especially for the 18 year old uh, yeah. 18 to 85 year old but there are parts which are uh, still uh, grappling with the supply and uh, mm-hmm. it is expected that uh, uh, once uh, you know the delhi government uh, you know put in a place a system where uh, you know they have uh, the vaccines at their disposal and they can inoculate uh, the people of the particular uh, uh you know age group that we are talking about it will uh, it will help them uh, to get uh, the vaccination the process done uh, in a matter of let's say 4 to 5 months but uh, it is uh, as of now it is uh, it's a herculean task which is for people who, who right the centers and the sites have to be increased like you are mentioning and the and ashwin kejriwal also said that the latest consignment that we have received is not large uh, last question uh, tapas before we uh, wind up with you uh, delhi cm arvind kejriwal uh, he has strengthened the home isolation system and uh, make system in place where covid positive patients will get a call uh, after 24 hours when the patient get positive within 24 hours i should say need of the hours uh, need of the hour you think because the patients uh, so that the patient don't reach that stage that they need to go to the hospital well you know this has this is a you know a, a great thing about this particular uh, management that uh, one gets a call uh, from the administration yeah. that uh, you know you're checking out your health in fact uh, just to give you an example my parents uh, they took up uh, tested positive and they are in home isolation so uh, uh, in in that sense uh, they have been uh, taking care of we have also spoken to uh, you know some some doctors uh, people from the local dispensary has also come Uh, the idea is to uh, you know uh, put them uh, you know to make them comfortable uh, and and give them the confidence that yes you can stay in yeah. home isolation uh, especially for you know uh, for elderly for senior citizens yeah. it is imperative to provide them with the necessary infrastructure the necessary medicines if the, if it is not there uh, and and hence the local dispensary will become you know absolutely tapas like you mentioned it's very very important it's very very imperative and for the elderly like you mentioned home isolation is very very important. thank you tapas thank you for giving us that information meanwhile according to the indian council of medical research 29 crore 67 lakh 75000 and 2209 samples have been tested for covid-19 so far across the country we are talking about and out of this 19 lakh 23131 samples were tested yesterday and as per the union health ministry 3 lakh 29113 recoveries were recorded in the last 24 hours taking the cumulative total of recovered patients to 1 crore 72 lakh 
80,844. And with this, the recovery rate currently stands at 81.99 percent, which is nearly 82 percent. And India's total active case load stands at over 35.66 lakh today. The country's present active case load consists of 16.92 percent of the total positive cases, and the fatality rate stands at 1.09 percent. Notably, India has crossed a landmark milestone in COVID-19 vaccination, recording over 16.25 crore COVID-19 vaccine doses being administered so far. And 16 crore, 25 lakh, 13,339 vac vaccination doses have been given so far, while 19 lakh, 55,733 doses were given yesterday. And also, over 4 lakh beneficiaries of age group 18 to 44 vaccinated in phase 3 of the vaccination drive. Moving on to our next story now, three terrorists were killed in an encounter between terrorists and security forces in the Kanigam area of the Shopian district of South Kashmir early today. And according to the latest reports, the operation is still underway and further details are awaited. One newly recruited terrorist, namely Tosif Ahmed, has surrendered. And DMK President MK Stalin will be sworn in as Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu on Friday at a formal function to be held in Raj Bhavan. Tamil Nadu Governor Banwari Lal Purohit accepted Stalin's claim to the post of Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu after he submitted a letter on his election as Legislator Party leader. The Raj Bhavan in a release said Stalin had called on the Governor yesterday and submitted a letter intimating him of his election. Governor Purohit invited him to form the next ministry in the state and be sworn in on 7th May, that is tomorrow at 9 a.m. at Raj Bhavan. Stalin had earlier said the ceremony would be held in a simple manner on the Raj Bhavan premises. And on Tuesday, Stalin was unanimously elected as legislative party leader of the DMK, and this will be the sixth government to be formed by the DMK in the state since 1967. Stalin will be the 26th Chief Minister of the state and the third of the DMK. Right, our correspondent Philip Matthew joins us to give us more information on this. Good morning, Philip. First of all, DMK President MK Stalin will be sworn in as the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu on Friday, that is tomorrow, and uh, it will be a low key affair due to COVID 19. That's correct. Uh, in fact, um uh, DMK President M.K. Stalin has made it very clear that uh, his focus will be almost entirely on managing the COVID pandemic. And he said that would be one of his first priorities on taking office. In fact, he's already set the ball rolling by, uh, you know, setting up uh, uh, teams of uh, uh, officials, senior officials to address the problem, especially in the districts where uh, the incidence of COVID-19 is at its highest. And um, he's, he's, in fact, already uh, talked about setting up a war room to manage the COVID-19 situation in the state. So uh, clearly the ball has been set rolling and even before he has resumed office, uh, the process of uh, you know, tackling COVID-19 has been uh, set in motion by the new government. So uh, we can expect to see a few more measures being announced once he takes over office. Uh, at the moment, uh, the entire attention of the new government was on managing the outbreak, uh, the second wave of corona that is currently sweeping the state. Absolutely, Philip. Like you mentioned, amid rising COVID-19 cases across the state, the biggest challenge will be uh, for him to handle the COVID-19 situation in the state. But again, uh, he also said that this is a difficult period, but it is uh, something which we cannot overcome. This, wa this is what M.K. Stalin said. Well, uh, is it, uh, there is no doubt the state is in a rather tight uh, fiscal mm. situation and uh, uh, with revenues down, and, uh, you know, the expenditure on, on account of corona increasing, uh, there's no doubt that uh, the new government has its hand, uh, has its task cut out. Uh, but uh, Stalin uh, has made it very clear that, uh, you know, he's prepared to confront the challenge head on. And as I said earlier, he's uh, already set up, uh, you know, panels of uh, senior officials to look into the matter, uh, to address issues of oxygen availability, uh, bed availability, as well as, uh, you know, ICU, uh, ICU, uh, you know, ICU, uh, ICU admissions as well. So all of these issues are being addressed by, uh, you know, teams of officials to ensure that, you know, things do not reach a critical uh, situation in the state. Uh, for the moment, uh, the state is able to manage with the available oxygen that it has. But, uh, you know, many 
uh, hospital authorities have indicated that uh, things could uh, turn, uh, take a turn for the worse in the next uh, uh, couple of weeks if uh, the rising cases are any indication. And also, uh, Philip, uh, can you elaborate more on the steps that are being uh, taken by the government to handle the COVID-19 situation? Uh, MK Stalin doing regular meetings with the health experts and has instructed uh, to create a war room also uh, to manage uh, and monitor everything? Absolutely. In fact, uh, that, uh, that, that is one of the first indications we have from the new government, the fact that they're going to set up a war room uh, to, to uh, basically tackle uh, COVID-19. It's an indication of the seriousness with which the government is uh, viewing this new outbreak. And it, uh, it, it wants to pool the efforts of all government departments as well as agencies to ensure that they're all on the same page when it comes to handling uh, patients who are affected by COVID-19. Because one of the issues uh, with regard to that has been the lack, lack of coordination between various wings of the government, uh, and uh, which has resulted in people having to rush from one hospital to the other uh, in search of uh, treatment for their near and dear ones. And uh, the, the uh, government is now trying to put in place a system to ensure that uh, the whole process is streamlined and uh, they say the setting up of a war room uh, will be a major step in this direction. Uh, also, don't forget that uh, from today, a new set of uh, uh, COVID curbs are coming into effect in Tamil Nadu for the next two weeks, uh, as per which, uh, you know, all shops uh, in the state will have to shut down except grocery uh, grocery and, uh, you know, pharmacies and, uh, you know, essential services. Apart from that, all shops will have to shut down. Cinemas have been closed. Uh, all meetings, uh, public uh, gatherings have been banned, and uh, e uh, public transport, only 50% attendance is being allowed from today for the next two weeks. So clearly, the government is uh, showing that it's serious about tackling the COVID outbreak and that it means business uh, when it comes uh, to tackling this, this new resurgence of COVID-19. Absolutely, Philip. And Stalin, in fact, vowed to make uh, immediate efforts to implement his party's electoral promises in a phased ma manner and also DMK's tenure vision document. Thank you, Philip. Thank you for giving us those vital inputs. Moving further, the Election Commission has decided to defer by-elections of parliamentary and assembly constituencies in various states and union territories in view of COVID-19 pandemic. The poll body reviewed the matter on Wednesday and decided that due to the outbreak of the second wave of COVID-19 in the country, it would not be appropriate to hold by-elections till the pandemic situation significantly improves and conditions become conducive to hold the by-elections. The Commission will take a decision in the matter at an appropriate time in the future after taking inputs from the concerned states and assessing the pandemic situation from mandated authorities like NDMA and SDMA. And the news coming in, the Rashtriya Lok Dal Chief and former Union Minister Chaudhary Ajit Singh passed away today. He was 82. The RLD chief, a prominent leader in western Uttar Pradesh, was admitted to a private hospital in Gurugram after his condition deteriorated due to a lung infection on Tuesday. Ajit Singh had tested positive for the coronavirus on April 20th. The son of former Prime Minister Chaudhary Charan Singh, Chaudhary Ajit Singh, was a seven-time MP from Bagpat. He also served as the Union Minister of Civil Aviation. And many took to social media to share condolence messages on Ajit Singh's demise. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed grief over Ajit Singh's demise. And this is what he tweeted, deeply saddened by the passing away of former Union Minister Chaudhary Ajit Singh Ji. He always worked for the welfare of farmers. He efficiently discharged the responsibilities of several departments at the centre. My thoughts are with his family and fans in this hour of mourning. Om Shanti. And Defence Minister Rajnath Singh to condole his death. He said, Ajit Singh served the public and the land and fought for farmers, labourers and other weaker sections of the society. Well, now let's move on to our next segment where we bring you news from across the globe. Right, first up, let's take a look at updates on COVID-19 from across the globe. COVID-19 has infected more than 15 crore, 58 lakh people globally, while over 13 crore, 32 lakh people have recovered from it. The number of lives lost due to the disease stands above 32 lakh, 
55,000 worldwide. The U.S. continues to remain worst affected from this disease. It has registered over 3 crore 32 lakh cases of the disease with more than 5 lakh 93,000 fatalities so far. And U.S. President Joe Biden's administration on Wednesday announced support for a global waiver on patent protections for COVID-19 vaccines, offering hope to poor nations that have struggled to access the life-saving doses. So India has been leading the fight within the World Trade Organization to allow more drug makers to manufacture the vaccines, a move pharma giants opposed. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai said that while intellectual property rights for businesses are important, Washington supports the waiver of those protections for COVID-19 vaccines in order to end the pandemic. So this is the release that we are showing you. Biden had been under intense pressure to waive protections for vaccine manufacturers, especially amid criticism that rich nations were hoarding COVID-19 vaccines. The reactions coming in, lauding the United States for extending support to waiving patent protections for COVID-19 vaccines amid the global health crisis. World Health Organization chief has termed the Joe Biden administration's decision as powerful example of U.S. leadership to address global health challenges. And the WHO chief in a series of tweets said that the move was a step towards vaccine equity prioritizing the well-being of all people everywhere at a critical time. This is what he tweeted. This is a monumental moment in the fight against COVID-19. The commitment by POTUS, Joe Biden and Ambassador Tai to support. The waiver of IP protections on vaccines is a powerful example of United States leadership to address global health challenges. And New York's Major League Baseball teams, the Yankees and the Mets, have announced to give free tickets to fans who get vaccinated for the coronavirus at their ballparks before the games. The announcement was made by New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo, said on Wednesday, vaccinated spectators will be seated in special sections of the stadium with non-vaccinated patrons seated in different sections at 33% capacity. And in a further move toward returning the country's largest city to pre-pandemic normality. Cuomo also announced that tickets to Broadway shows would go on a sale on Thursday for performances beginning September 14th. Theatres will be able to operate at 100% capacity. And in the US, the National Air and Space Museum Odwar Hazy Center has reopened. It has become the first of the Smithsonian Museums to reopen after closing for the coronavirus pandemic. Last year, patrons roamed the museum exhibits wearing masks and distancing. The center has resumed operations seven days a week between with COVID-19 health and safety measures in place. The museum features popular exhibits like the Mercury Mission's Freedom 7 capsule and the Blue Angels FA 18C Hornet. And India has reacted on Russia's ongoing malign activity with regards to Ukraine, saying that the path forward can only be through peaceful dialogue for a lasting solution acceptable to all concerned. And speaking at the UNSC Arya Formula meeting on Ukraine, Councillor Pratik Mathur said that India has always supported long-term peace and stability in Europe and beyond. At the outset, Allow me to place on record our reservations on this format of the meeting as it has been misused in recent past. Normally, issues are taken up for consideration by the UN Security Council only if they have ramifications for international peace and security. There are others which need to be discussed in a bilateral or even a plurilateral context. India has always advocated political and diplomatic solutions that protect the legitimate interests of all countries in the region and ensure long-term peace and stability in Europe and beyond. The path forward can only be through peaceful dialogue 
for a lasting solution acceptable to all concerned. To conclude, we urge all parties to continue to engage through all channels of dialogue. Right, so India's reaction on Russia's ongoing malign activity. Moving further, meanwhile, the group of seven scolded both China and Russia on Wednesday, casting the Kremlin as malicious and Beijing as a bully. The G7 this week addressed what it perceives as the biggest current threats, China, Russia and the coronavirus pandemic. G7 foreign ministers in a 12,400-word communique said Russia was trying to undermine democracies and threatening Ukraine, while China was guilty of human rights abuses and of using its economic clout to bully others. The G7 said it would bolster collective efforts to stop China's coercive economic policies and to counter Russia's Russian disinformation, part of a move to present the West as a much broader alliance than just the core G7 countries. And UK has sent two naval ships, HMS Severn and HMS Tamar, to patrol the British Channel Island of Jersey. The move came after France suggested it could cut power supplies to the island. Jersey imports 95% of its electricity from France with diesel generators and gas turbines providing backup. Jersey's government said France and the European Union had expressed their unhappiness with the conditions placed on the issuance of fishing licenses, while British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has pledged his unwavering support for the island after he spoke with Jersey officials about the prospect of the French blockade. Well, now let's move on to our next segment, which is Web News Review. Right, my colleague Abhishek Jha is with us. He is joining me to give us stories on Web News Review. Over to you, Abhishek. Uh, thank you, Abhishek, and morning. Uh, the first news that I have uh, brought to you is from the Statesman, uh, which said uh, some Indians in UAE have started manufacturing uh, oxygen cylinders in spite of uh, CAG cylinders that they were already manufacturing, uh, seeing the demand that has uh, become, uh, you know, inevitable in India to, uh, you know, to, to meet because of the rising uh, crisis of COVID. So, uh, just a story of how a few individuals, company who have started uh, trying to help India in this hour of crisis from the statesman. The next news that I have brought to you is uh, from Hindustan Times where uh, it has been actually explained uh, how this uh, third wave will be uh, different from first two wave and uh, what all could be the reason, what all could be the impact and uh, how it is going to be the spread, uh, you know, it's spreading across the various segments of our society uh, across the country and uh, what could be the government's uh, priorities in, in this time of third wave. So, uh, scientists are saying the third wave is inevitable and it will uh, set in somewhere after the second wave is, uh, you know, kind of over or uh, very much died down. Uh, so, we will have to continue to be braced up uh, with this uh, COVID pandemic and not let our guards down in the few months from now. The, uh, the Indian Express is uh, the next news which I am uh, bringing to you is uh, it has explained why US statement on waiving vaccine patent is important in fight against COVID-19. We know that IPR regulations uh, are very strict uh, in terms of sharing formula and uh, you know the, the intellectual property of, uh, of any vaccine or any drugs and currently we know that the, as the world is fighting with this COVID pandemic, so Biden administration's promise of uh, supporting the waiving of the IPR on the vaccines developed by USA uh, comes a big relief uh, because USA had at least three, four vaccines uh, which are uh, very much uh, uh, you know available and their efficacy is very uh, very huge. And from here onwards, we can see a few more countries, uh, including India, Russia, and China, uh, coming forward and waiving their uh, I, you know IPR or intellectual property rights off from their developed vaccines, so that more and more uh, facilities uh, of manufacturing vaccines could be created across the globe and world can have a more affordable, accessible and sustainable vaccination program uh, during the course of next few months to fight the COVID pandemic. The pioneer has uh, made news of Himachal Pradesh imposing curfew till May 16 to curb COVID. Uh, we have known, we have seen how uh, various states are doing it on their own. Uh, uh, we have seen how Punjab, Haryana, Bihar, UP in some parts uh, uh, have imposed restrictive movement and you know stringent uh, movement restrictions and curb on various day-to-day -day activities to to break the chain of spread. 
Animatel is the latest state to join that uh, fray, and it has also started to uh, curb the movement and the curfew has been imposed until the 6th May, uh, so that uh, people have less interaction and less mingling, and probably this this will help in breaking the chain of COVID spread and help the state deal with this COVID pandemic. The Times of India is next newspaper uh, that I am bringing to you. It has. Uh, Made use of huge supplies of vaccine components to India to enable manufacturing of two crore doses of Covishield. We knew that uh, recently, like uh, just a few days ago, Biden and administration lifted uh, the ban on the, those raw materials which were needed to manufacture the vaccines and other therapeutic drugs in India. And uh, with the latest uh, consignment of those raw materials being available to Indian uh, manufacturing uh, facilities of vaccines, uh, we can hope that. Uh, next uh, transfer of uh, COVID shield vaccine will be uh, ready to soon uh, for uh, for us and for everybody who is uh, waiting for this COVID shield vaccine. Uh, and it is actually going to be a very helpful uh, because every country, including USA, India, and every country is joining hands together in supplying and deregulating the stuff so that more and more uh, therapeutics, drugs, the vaccines, and mechanical equipment and everything which is needed as a resource in fighting this COVID pandemic could be made available to. Uh, wherever it is needed uh, right now in most urgent situation. Uh, this is all uh, from the web news review of Abhishek. And for more uh, news, uh, I'm, I'm back to you. Hmm. Thank you, Abhishek. Interesting stories that you took in web news review. And uh, this third uh, wave of third talks of COVID is really, really scary. Moving on, let's uh, move on to our next segment, which is BizBuzz. The RBI has continued to calibrate its policy throughout the COVID pandemic and the series of measures announced yesterday reflects a novel approach. The decision to create a dedicated Rs 50,000 crore fund for ramping up COVID-related healthcare infrastructure reflects RBI's commitment to transcend boundaries by addressing not only economic health but also public health. The decision to augment the lending firepower of small finance banks through priority sector tag is a very welcome move. The announcement of a restructuring framework for individuals and SMEs, the CRR flexibility of lending to SMEs, and the measures to help the state governments through WMA relaxation are all aimed to tide over the short-term disruptions to economic activity. So in all, a very nuanced approach to managing the stress felt in the economy. And the State Bank of India chairman has approached RBI's announcement saying the decision to augment the lending firepower of small finance banks through priority sector tag is a very welcome move. SBI chairman Dinesh Khara said the announcement of a restructuring framework for individuals and SMEs, the CRR flexibility for lending to SMEs and the measures to help the state governments through WMA relaxation are all aimed to tide over the short term disruptions to economic activity. And he added that in all a very nuanced approach to managing the stress felt in the economy. Now from business to our next segment which is sports track. Football news, Chelsea boss Thomas Tuchel says Manchester City are the benchmark after his side secured a famous win over Real Madrid to set up an all English Champions League final. The Blues beat the record 13-time European champions 2-0 at Stamford Bridge to win 3-1 on aggregate. Goals by Timo Werner and Mason Mount sent Chelsea into a Champions League final slow down. Chelsea will face Pep Guardiola side Manchester City in Istanbul on 29th May. The final in Istanbul will be the second All-English Champions League final in three seasons. And now let's take a look at today's weather forecast. Under the influence of a western disturbances, scattered to fairly widespread rainfall, thunder shower very likely over western Himalayan region and isolated to scattered rainfall, thunderstorms is likely over plains of northwest India during next four to five days. Isolated heavy rainfall is also very likely over Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh during next 24 hours. Now let's look at the temperature across India.
So it's a reminder again to wear a face mask and follow government protocols and don't lower your guard because the fight is big. And before we end this edition of Breakfast Show, we are leaving you with a glimpse of New York Botanical Garden where Japanese avant-garde artist Yaoi Kusama has brought her spectacular steel floral installations painted in vibrant hues with polka dots. Take a look. 